Hi everyone, welcome to Creative Writing Module 2. Um, as before, I'm using Zoom to show you my PowerPoint and hopefully I'll do a better job than I did with Module 1. So let's get started, here we go. Okay, Module 2, Creative Writing. Welcome to Creative Writing Module 2 guided writing. We're moving on from free writing into a form of creative writing that offers more support to students as they flex their creative writing muscles. In this module, we'll see how to use and create activities that offer students some scaffolding for their writing. As always, I'm encouraging you to fast forward this part. Okay, here we go. We're going to start by refreshing and reviewing what we learned in the last module. Remember what some of the features of free writing were? In free writing, there's no set structure, no format, no text type, no paragraphing. All ideas are encouraged because we want them to break that writer's block. It's kind of like brainstorming. There are no bad ideas. In free writing, there is, however, a time limit set. This is important because A, it focuses students' attention, and B, it encourages them to keep writing without stopping. Last module, I gave you an exercise with two minutes to write, but I used to do it with my ESL classes at the start or more often at the end of class for more sustained time. We used to call it sprint writing, and it was a great way for me to check in and see what they'd learned, what they were thinking, what writing structures they needed to work on. So yeah, why do free writing? it activates prior knowledge. That happened when I did it at the start of class. When I did it mid-class, it helped create, break their writer's block and get their creativity flowing. I also used it as a diagnostic tool. I used to pick up everyone's papers, skim through them all to see what ideas they already had and what mistakes most of the class were making. That way I could focus my instruction where it was needed most, for example, on getting them to use paragraphs. Sometimes I would encourage my students to use their focus vocabulary, like low frequency or academic words that they were learning. I would often challenge them to include two, three, four, or five words from their vocabulary lists into their free write. Um, we didn't actually have to evaluate all of these. They became part of our writing portfolio. All right, so today we're moving away from free writing into guided writing. Guided writing, as the name implies, provides more support for students than free writing. Think of it as scaffolding. Instead of letting students write about whatever comes into their minds, you give them prompts or questions to answer or sentence starters. For students who are struggling with things like structure, paragraphing, when to start a new paragraph or what order to put ideas in when writing, guided writing provides a nice balance between letting them express their ideas and giving them a structure to flesh the ideas out. Okay. As always, I like putting you into the shoes of your students. We're going to try one kind of guided writing activity, specially designed to encourage creative and descriptive writing. This one's called Guided Writing on a Picture. Get your papers and pencils handy, or if you prefer, your keyboard. Okay, Guided Writing on a Picture. Look carefully at the following picture. Don't decide anything just yet. In a minute, you're going to see a set of, follow of questions. You're going to be asked to answer them. When you answer them, do it in complete sentences. Feel free to get creative and elaborate. Once you answer the questions, it will form a three paragraph descriptive essay. Here's our lovely picture. Take 30 seconds. I time the animation to last this long to look at the picture. If you can, start to imagine a story. Press pause if you need to. Okay, now we're ready to do some guided writing. Here is what we do. Read the questions as they appear. Pause the video as you need to. I've set the timer for five minutes for this slide. 
but that might not be long enough for most of you. When I did this exercise in class, it often lasted 15 to 20 minutes. People really enjoyed writing about this. Answer the questions in complete sentences. The answers to the three groups of questions will form a three paragraph descriptive essay. Okay, the first paragraph, I want you to look at the house. Where is this house? What is the weather like? How do you know? How old is the house? What condition is it in? What is the inside of the house like? Next, let's think about the people. Who lives there? What is their financial situation? Why do they live there? How many people are in the house now? Why do they leave their shoes outside? What are the people inside the house doing right now? How are they feeling? What are they thinking about? Would they move if they could? Why or why not? Finally, let's talk about that cat. Why is the cat outside? How does it feel about living here? Why? What are the nice things for a cat about living here? What are the drawbacks? What is the cat thinking about? Where did it come from? Where will it go next? Speaking of cats, mine is meowing in the background. My apologies. Okay, when you finished writing, post your stories on Moodle. The fun part is to read everyone else's stories. 
if you can, take a look at the variety of text. Some people will be matter of fact and answer the questions as precisely and simply, succinctly as possible, but others will get creative and produce some really wildly imaginative and evocative text. There's really an interesting variety. Have a look. Okay, you've just done a guided writing activity. Now's the time to sit back and reflect. By the way, this activity is just one format of many different available types of guided writing activities. Compared to free writing, guiding, guided writing activities usually have these features. They provide scaffolding to help students structure their ideas into paragraphs. They support students who are struggling to find ideas, and they can provide differentiation, and they can encourage students to focus on a particular structure. Sound familiar? Okay, you've been a student, it's time to put on your teacher hat again. You're gonna write a few questions of your own about a picture. The objective for this exercise is twofold. It gets you to practice asking questions that encourage creative and descriptive writing, and it'll hopefully result in a ready-to-go creative writing activity you can use with your future students. Are you ready? Step one. Choose a picture. Before we start, here are some general guidelines. Today I'm going to give you a selection of pictures, but in the future you might want to choose your own. When selecting pictures, make sure that the, the students are familiar with the, the culture or context. If you want students to practice specific structure, say the past tenses, for example, you might want to do an example with the students first, as an I do or we do. Same thing goes for ideas. If you're asking students to do the writing as a kind of reinvestment activity, you might want to consider building an activate moment. Okay, here are the pictures. Each one will be on the screen for about 10 seconds. Look at each and choose one. All four of these pictures will reappear later. Don't worry. If you want, you can also pause and rewind the video if that helps. Okay, now you've seen the pictures, the next step is to write some questions to guide students in their writing. The goal is to start by writing six to ten questions about your photo. Start by asking about things they can see in the picture, but then if you want your students to produce really interesting writing, ask questions that go beyond the picture in space, time, and inference. I've included some examples of these kind of questions here. You can ask what people are feeling, what they're afraid of, who they're thinking of, what they hope will happen, who's taking the picture, what happened before the picture is taken. You get it. Finally, do not ask yes, no questions. You know, ones like, does the boy like pizza? Why not? Well, try answering them yourself. What's the result? Remember, the goal is to get students to write a lot, creatively and descriptively. If they can answer your questions in one word, yes or no, then we aren't meeting our goal. Pause here and take some time to write out your questions. Okay, step three. Now that you have a list of questions, it's time to group them into a structure for students, one theme per paragraph. I've suggested the following headings. What you can see in the image, what you might infer from the image, and what you can imagine. As you get more comfortable preparing this kind of activity for your students, you can, of course, expand or change categories. The sky's the limit. Add more questions if six to ten aren't enough.
Once you've finished writing and grouping your questions, take time to post the results on Moodle. What I'm hoping is that we can even share our questions so that perhaps we can leave with a bank of creating writing, creative writing activities for our students. So maybe a set of questions for each of the four pictures. I encourage you to help each other and build each other's portfolios. Okay, believe it or not, this is only one kind of guided writing activity. There are many more. I've decided to include a few examples on the following slides to show you how graphic organizers can be used to scaffold and support student writing. We've seen how that can be done for academic writing, but it can also be done for creative writing and narrative writing. In the next slide, for example, there's a graphic organizer that helps students prepare to write a short story. Take a few moments to have a look. following slide has two more different graphic organizers that help students think about the kind of events that happen in a narrative text. What most students don't seem to realize is that a story needs a conflict. The problem. The character and setting is all really important, but what the character does in the story is even more important. Imagine if we had a story where everything was great. Wouldn't be much of a story, would it? So these graphic organizers help students organize the problem and the events that drive the story from moment to moment, event to event, and eventually how the problem gets solved. Finally, I thought I'd include this one for those of you who like the classic plotline graphic. This image, color-coded, is a great way to get students thinking. You can ask them to fill in with details for their own stories. This is the last graphic organizer that I've included. I thought it might be better for some of the lower grades, and as you can see, it probably needs a place for the conclusion. Once you finish this video, take a few moments to look at the resources for creative writing I've put on Moodle. These include free writing and guided writing activities, as well as some great resources to get students to practice writing dialogues. And that's it, folks. Thank you for watching this module and sticking with me while I get better and better at this, I hope. All right.